Hi guys, my name is Andrew Reeder. Uh, I'm a film designer here in Los Angeles. I've been working in the entertainment industry for 15 years. Uh, my background was in architecture. I studied undergrad at UC Berkeley and pursued graduate study at Yale University. Now film design has become a real passion for me. I'm constantly confronted with creative challenges from project to project that truly push the limit of what I can do day to day with the digital as well as traditional tools I have learned to use over the years. Now I've been asked today to share with you some work I did on the film Terminator Genesis. Um, so the department I work in, uh, the art department, is a pretty wild place. Uh, we have uh, a variety of artists, uh, different designers, uh, who come from many different backgrounds. Uh, we have people with backgrounds in automotive design, uh, in product design, in creature design, as we look at some work here uh, from my colleagues on the film. Now what makes film design so interesting to me uh, is learning and sharing techniques with these other artists and designers. Uh, the process of design on a film like Terminator is complex and extremely visual. Scariest of all, uh, what we're designing and attempting to build in a very short amount of time hasn't been done before. Now in case you didn't see the film or don't know much about the Terminator franchise, uh, there are several themes that show up in all the movies. Um, the first are the cyborg assassins known as Terminators. Uh, the second would be the coming of Skynet, an artificial intelligence system that sparks the nuclear holocaust to wipe out humanity. Uh, the human resistance effort against Skynet. And the concept of time travel, where the resistance sends one of its own to protect and Skynet sends its own to terminate. Now, the next point I'd like to make here is uh, a, bit, a note here on um, film organization itself. Now, film organization is very much top-down in its structure, uh, as we uh, see starting from a film studio at the top here, uh, like Warner Brothers or Paramount, and moving down to the various departments that contribute uh, to the making of the film. Now, as mentioned, my department is the art department. Uh, the art department is headed up by a production designer uh, right here and uh, as well as art directors uh, who manage the day-to-day -day work in the office and a concept designer like myself right here uh, who are tasked with visually developing uh, specific design challenges. Now the design challenge that I was tasked with uh, was providing a design solution for the Cyberdyne R&D labs. Cyberdyne is of course a fictitious tech company that develops the artificial intelligence known as Skynet. The labs according to our script were said to be deep underground below the Cyberdyne campus, uh, shown here in this image, um, and served as an environment for the Time Displacement Device, or TDD, which allows time travel in the film. Now we see the lab in two different states. One, uh, the 2029 version, uh, where Skynet has built its own version of the TDD, and the 2017 version, uh, which is very much a human construct. Now the challenge of an artificial intelligence building its own architecture preoccupied me and the design team. And in thinking about how a computer would build, I reasoned that a computer would mimic nature, that geometry found in nature would serve as inspiration. Secondly, I felt that since Skynet itself would have been written in the language of mathematics, it would utilize the language of mathematics in its design. So a parametric architecture seemed appropriate as a starting point. Also key to our design intent was the appearance of function, that the design appear functional. Here in an early concept sketch I began playing with volumes generated from simple Rhino commands and utilizing the Paneling Tools plugin for its speed and ease of use. A simple depth pass here in Moto began to create the kind of haunting and terrifying look that we found intriguing about the space. Uh, here are some views of our final Rhino model, the coffers, which were all planar, yet all different from one another as they populated the torus shape, are shown here. A closer look. Uh, here is a view of our time displacement device, eventually uh, fabricated using a five-axis milling process. And then we get into some concept paintings uh, showing our 2017 version, the human construct. Here, a uh, lighting scenario featuring a colleague of mine, Steve Jung, painting over uh, my rhino geometry in Photoshop. Another view showing uh, how we would feature the resistance force uh, roping into our 2029 version after defeating Skynet. 
Uh, here are Maya files showing some space planning studies intended to solve the action called out in the script. And uh, some of my concept paintings here uh, intended as lighting and material studies, uh, as well as presentations to the director, Alan Taylor, and the studio, uh, in this case Paramount Pictures, to get the design approved by both uh, the director and the studio, uh, so that we could move into production uh, with the design. And some final shots, some final concept artwork uh, showing the liquid poly alloy uh, uh, pools uh, with our control room in the distance. Uh, toward the end of the talk, we'll have a, uh, a live action shot from that control room looking out into the space. So what I wanted to get into now was our fabrication effort. Uh, I wanted to share how we set about uh, realizing the design. We were confronted with an enormous challenge of each coffer being different than the next and so many of them here to fabricate. But luckily we had the Rhino model, uh, which had not only allowed us to arrive at an aesthetic that was appropriate for the storytelling, it also had held the design to a construction tolerance uh, which would work for fabrication. Uh, so here in this image, uh, we see an example of the coffer construction. Uh, the front face was achieved with a CNC water jet cutting process. Uh, next we see a uh, shop drawing here uh, for the CNC cutting. And uh, then each coffer uh, was then fitted into a support frame uh, designed to accept the static load of the design. Uh, here, another view of that frame, uh, which we arrived at by reverse engineering the Rhino model. And another view showing the individual pieces fitting together, and a uh, final shot here uh, showing the coffers with our TGI decking uh, fitting into place. Um, so the important thing to note here uh, is how the model and paneling tools uh, helped us on so many levels by providing so much accuracy to something uh, that was complicated and varied. Um, we would have had a very difficult time uh, without a 3D file and without the ability to extract much needed information uh, from the model. So I'd like to uh, move now into some views of the set under construction. Uh, here we see an overall of our physical build. Uh, from this image you can see the extent of our fabrication effort, employing the techniques I described before. Uh, also note how the visual effects department uh, will then extend what we capture during live action photography, uh, which explains why we paint everything green around the set to facilitate the digital set extension. Uh, here we see a day of shooting with our director, Alan Taylor, uh, this gentleman right there, uh, who was a big fan of what we designed and a joy to work with uh, day to day. Here's a shot of Alan uh, standing at the top of the stem with the 2029 time displacement device over him. Uh, this is a view of uh, Neil Spizak, this uh, gentleman right here, our production designer and uh, Yannick Sears, our visual effects supervisor, this guy right here, uh, and Kramer Morgenthau, um, our director of photography, shown right here, uh, having a conversation about uh, the digital set extension as it related to our live action sequences. Um, next we have a uh, shot of the coffers being positioned in the support frame. Um, you saw that uh, before in our, in our Rhino model. Detail shot there. Uh, this is a view from the uh, top of the stem looking down. Uh, additional progress here on the build. And the 2017 version showing our uh, scaffolding units applied to the coffers. Uh, in this case we wanted to show in 2017 how the scientists from Cyberdyne uh, would appear to be at work uh, on the time displacement device. Uh, here's a detailed shot of the coffers. And some process shots now uh, of the time displacement device, which was designed and modeled in Rhino, and then sent to a five-axis mill for fabrication. And some final views of the time displacement device. The ceiling shown here, 
and uh, Alan sizing up uh, what we've done for his live action sequence. So I'd like to move on uh, to some closing thoughts um, here uh, as we look at some finished shots um, from the film itself. Um, here's a scene from the opening of the film showing the resistance taking control of Skynet's time displacement chamber. And here is seen later in the film showing our actors looking out to the 2017 version uh, from the control room within the Cyberdyne complex. So I'd like to leave each of you uh, with some advice as you move forward in your careers. Uh, one point is to master the new tools available to you, but not to forget about the old ones. Traditional modes of working, such as hand sketching, a drawing series, as I did here, are enormously valuable exercises. They simply make you stronger. Uh, traditional ways of drawing a design still apply today as they did yesterday. As we look at some drawings I generated for Star Trek Into Darkness and for Avatar. The final point would be awareness. Uh, remaining aware of what your peers and colleagues are doing in their work and awareness of the continuing advancement in the di digital tools uh, we use day to day. Uh, it's been years since I graduated, but remaining aware and informed about developments in the Rhino community was key to my success on Terminator. Never lose your curiosity and desire to learn. Your education is really just beginning when you leave NSAD. Now, for those of you that would like to know a little bit more about me, uh, I do have a website at uh, andrewreaderart.com. That's andrewreaderart.com. Uh, there you can take a look at some of the various uh, film projects uh, that I've been a part of uh, over the years. Uh, I do uh, have an email that uh, Raja uh, can provide uh, for you. Uh, very sorry I wasn't there for the Q&A process. Um, but if uh, you have additional questions, uh, don't hesitate to drop me an email. Okay, guys, take care.